Welcome to a very special edition of One on One. I'm Howie Rose, and I am joined today by Major League Baseball's all-time rookie home run leader, Pete Alonzo. I didn't mean to dramatize That's, it, but how does that good. sound to you? It's, it sounds weird in a good way. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not used, to, used to hearing that yet. I mean, it just with everything kind of happening, and uh, it's... It's it's crazy. I, I still don't know how to kind of process the the whole thing. Like being number one on that list, uh, it's it's kind of mind boggling. Well, in the interest of full disclosure, we're talking to Pete prior to the final game of the 2019 season. So, I would say that's about 17 hours or so after you hit home run number 53. And all I could think of to ask you to start this thing off is. Mm -hmm as much of a whirlwind as last night was, can you possibly have gotten any sleep? No. <laughs> can you play a Major League Baseball game today? Yeah, absolutely I can. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I mean, it's 162. It's in, uh, I've, we're, for me, it's kind of like I had an option to, to have an off day, but for me, it's like, well, it's, it's kind of my obligation to I sign up to be a big league baseball player. It's like you got 162 and, um, I'm willing to play, and I want to play, and I'm able to. So I don't understand uh, what else is kind of holding me back. So, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a, uh, some people here that want to catch the last game of the season, and um, or maybe I'm, catch number 54 or yeah, 55. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, anything can happen in baseball. So let, let me um, take you back to a conversation that we had on opening day. I'll never forget it because we were in the tunnel between the clubhouse and the dugout. And I was just asking you some general thoughts about your first day in the big leagues. And mm -hmm. you just had this glaze, which made me think you were like a kid at Disneyland, so awed and excited by the surroundings. Now that you've had six months to reflect on that and compare it in juxtaposition mm -hmm. with the feeling that you had hitting number 53 and seeing the reaction of the fans, which was the greater feeling prior to opening day or after 53? I think I, I think those are two very similar feelings, but it's two different compartments or two different events or where it's, I guess, yeah, it's two different, yeah, it's like two different compartments, I guess, if I had to describe it. Um, but the feeling of opening day, that's like, I don't know, it's, it's, something that I've worked for for I mean I've been playing baseball since I was three years old um, so 21 years of just kind of playing baseball and, and hoping and dreaming and working to get to the top um, I mean that's that's like fruition of all the hard work and stuff prior to uh, being a big leaguer and to be rewarded like that um, was surreal and to get rewarded for um, just the, the work and stuff like into this year, um, like as the year kind of went on and as kind of everything started to unfold, um, the hard work, the preparation, like didn't stop. I mean, I didn't want to be comfy here. Um, and because of making the team with opening day, I didn't want to get sent down. Like say if I were to like struggle for an extended period of time, like I didn't want to go back. I mean, this is my opportunity to, to really grasp a, a dream and, and not just and turn that into a goal, as opposed to just letting it be like this whimsical thing. And if I, if I kind of got caught up too much in that, um, in that kind of like dream whimsical state, then I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to take the opportunity and, and really take a hold of it, um, and kind of just focusing on on day to day, um, not. Over, not overlooking anything, not necessarily looking in the big picture. I just wanted to focus on, okay, we got who do we got today? We got so and so on the mound. We got so and so team. They like to do this, this and that. We got the catcher behind the plate who likes to call a game like that. So and you keep a book on all yeah, this, right? Yeah, absolutely. So how much is it like studying for a test in college when you prepare for a game because of the notes you've accrued? Yeah, um, I wouldn't say it's like a test. It's more of like a like a blue book. So uh, I don't know if they're still doing this in college, but it's like you have like just the blue book. It's like the, you just have your essay. You, you do all your research, you do all your stuff, and you don't know what the, what's, you're gonna have to write on. 
and then you get to the when you get to the test it's like okay what's your interpretation of the material and how well can you master it and I feel like I've, I've done a really good job of preparing um, yeah pretty much preparing for the test which is which is the game and you were a history major in college am I right yes baseball history is a subject unto itself mm -hmm. have you been able to grasp yet that no. you now have a prominent <laughs> place in baseball history yeah um, to to really understand that for me is 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 really difficult because I I'm, I'm a baseball junkie I'm a I try and, and be a student of the game and I, I appreciate what um, kind of like different pioneers of the game I like like the Babe Ruth, the Lou Gehrig's, um, I mean the Piazzas, the Jeters, the uh, the David Ortiz's, kind of what certain players were able to do, pave the path for the future, kind of what they were willing to do and be able to do it and how those people represent the game and are just huge ambassadors of the game and how they impacted like, not just like the game itself, but like fans and a culture and how they impact the city. And pretty much everyone in the history of baseball that's that stands out uh, to me is, is on that list and I'm above of them which is weird I grew up in an awesome time to watch baseball in, in like the 90s and the, in, the, in the 2000s and I mean you can just rattle off names like A-Rod, Ken Griffey Jr., Mark McGuire, like Piazza, like Randy Johnson, like total like house like Roger Clemens, total like giants in the game and it's crazy that I have a, a special place a part of that because I, I just yeah. have so much passion and love for for this game and, and, and it's 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 mind-boggling and if you were to talk to any one of those people that you mentioned they would tell you they had certain hurdles and certain challenges along the way mm -hmm. and you know this when we were hearing about this kid named Pete Alonso on his way up through the system one of the things we heard was that if anything was going to hold him back in blossoming as a big leaguer, it might be his defense at first base. So when I think back to the very first exhibition game you played this year in Port St. Lucie, I'm curious if you thought that that one first inning might have been a harbinger of what was coming because you dropped a throw mm -hmm. in the first inning, yeah. which, if I remember right, led to a run. And it didn't even matter if it did or not, but you, yeah. you dropped the throw and everybody might have been looking at that going, wow, he might be challenged at first base. And then you come up in the bottom of the first inning. Mm -hmm. Exhibition game. But the first pitch you see, I think you went dead central, about 400 plus. Yeah. Alonzo drives one deep to center over the head of Pache, and it's out of here. Pete Alonzo on the first pitch he sees in spring training displays the power that Met fans have been salivating for. A two-run homer in his first spring at bat from a player who had 36 in the minor leagues last year. Was there a message there, if only to yourself, that you could not only overcome the defense, but that you were going to find a way to make the defense somehow coalesce with your bat? Yeah, um, for me, I, I, I just compete. Like, I, I try and move forward. Like, if there's any... But does that one sequence stick out in your mind at all? Because um, of what it represented? Firsts, right? First throw, yeah. first home run, first inning. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it was just all... I mean, that entire spring, I, I was... That was probably some of the most stressful times... I've ever had playing baseball just because of the unknown because for me it's like I knew that I knew there I mean there was a ton of implications like of me having a good spring I didn't know if I was going to make the team because uh, because of kind of like the service time stuff I didn't mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. to make the team mm -hmm. um, and I, I wanted to be as, as perfect as I could because I, I I worked incredibly hard in the offseason I got I got an incredible shape um, like physically, mentally, I, I worked incredibly hard at, at defense and um, yeah, I, I had something to prove and it wasn't, it wasn't a, anything specific um, like in that one moment because I know that that one moment I'm going to have plenty of at-bats in spring. I know I'm going to have plenty of defensive innings. I know I'm going to have mm -hmm. like an opportunity. I mean, the throw, I... I would have caught and also that's the first throw of spring training so in a, in a game live situation and also kind of with the the pressure the internal pressure I had because for me I, w I didn't have any 
option other than to, to make the team. I, this is like, you know what? I'm going to make this damn team. Like, I'm going to do whatever I can to make it happen. Yeah, it's frustrating, but kind of in the back of my mind, it's also the guy on the mound. I faced a ton of the minors before. Um, yeah, it's Tukey, Tukey Tucson. Mm -hmm. um, faced him a ton, so I had a pretty, uh, pretty good understanding of what he was going to try and do, especially with the guy on first. So um, it was, I was just kind of fortunate in that regard that I had a, a pretty good scouting report in my head with the guy on the mound, with, with right. going in there. So that was pretty comforting, facing a guy that I've like faced before. And I wanted, to, I wanted to do something. I had something to prove. And I, I mean, I had a chip, and I, I, I'd, I'd like to think I still do have a chip. That was the first eye-opener. But as you reflect on six months in the big leagues, can you be, because there are a lot of us who watch this game every day who feel you should be as proud of what you've accomplished defensively, at least based on what we were led to mm -hmm. believe, however fair or unfair that might have been, as yeah. offensively? I mean, I've, I mean, I, I feel like I've always been a, a good first, a really good first baseman. It's just a matter of uh, proving, proving it consistently. Like college, I, I was really damn good. Like I was a really damn good first baseman. And um, I had a really good season in Brooklyn defensively. Um, I don't think I made an error. And then kind of going into St. Lucie, um, I, I feel like I was, I was pressing too hard after my injury because I was trying to I was trying to do everything all at once I was trying to be Superman instead I just needed to be Pete because I, I missed eight weeks it's like oh man I really need to get going I need to get going I need to get going um, but then after after a while it, it was I call it a defensive slump it was it was more of a, a mental than physical block um, but after I feel like I overcame that and I feel like I've done a pretty good job this year. I feel like I've done a really good job. Um, That's an understatement. Yeah, um, <laughs> but for me, I, I'd, I'd like to hold myself to, to high standards. Like I want to win a Gold Glove one day. Well, Goldschmidt was your guy, and, yeah. and they said that his defense was not necessarily big league ready when he broke in either. And look at him now. Exactly. I mean, he's Gold Glove um, MVP type caliber mm -hmm. player, and to me, Goldie, Goldie's the standard, and I, I want to be. I want to be that type of that type of player. Well, you are now the standard when it comes to hitting home runs as a rookie. And I want to take a look at what you accomplished on the night of September the 28th. We're just going to look at home run number 53 together. When I say three, why don't you just hit play? Okay. And I want you as best as you can remember in whatever fog you might still in after everything from last night. Let's hit play. One, two, three. And... Just take us through your mindset. The crowd is in great anticipation and everything that's kind of funneling through your head as you try to satisfy over 30,000 people. G kind of going into, as soon as like I started hearing my walkout music, um, my, I just kind of went numb. How yeah. about your ankle? Did that go numb? No, I, I smashed it off my knee. Oh, okay. Uh, swung it over, swung it a sinker, so. But are you thinking, I want to hit this ball out of the park, period. No, I was just, I mean, Fulte, he, he's, got, he's got a really good life on his fastball. I feel like if I just touched it, uh, the, sweet spot, the sweet spot to the ball, then it would have uh, it would gone a long way. So I guess right now I'm just thinking, get the ball up out over the plate, let the ball run back into your barrel. So that was down. It was 2-1 pitch, if I recall, right? Or was it 2-2? I can't even remember. See, I I'm asking it, you No, know, it might have been this one. Because I'm thinking to myself, center field, right center. Um, and then, nope, yeah, 2-1 okay. pitch. It wasn't, it wasn't in the area. So right, this entire at-bat, I just felt numb. It was just pure, pure instincts at this point. Great time to be hearing from Dallas Keuchel, by the way. Yeah. But that's another story for another time. Yeah, and then, <laughs> yeah, it's... Every at bat, I walk up out to the plate alone. It's me against everybody else. But I don't know what it was, but this at bat, I felt that like I, I wasn't alone. I, I don't know why, but um, it was. I kind of felt like when I swung, like that time uh, on that two one pitch, I felt like it was just so easy. I felt like someone was like swinging with me. I know it sounds weird, but it just felt. It, it just felt so effortless and 
I, I just felt at ease. Like I, and then for that to, as soon as the ball left the bat, it was just. Well, this is, this is what I love because this is unbridled joy on the part of your teammates. And you're a rookie. And I don't think we've really touched on that quite enough because these guys are as happy for you as these fans were on that night and continue to be as they watch this thing. And what Frazier, by the way, I remember from another angle, it looked like he was going to jump out of his shoes when you connected because he knew that it was the record. But, I mean, here this is, you've accomplished something that nobody in the history of the game has ever accomplished. And each one of these guys feel like they have a piece of it. And that's not an easy thing to do for a rookie. How did these guys, and why were they able to accept you as a leader on this team when there were veterans here who had put in way more time in the big leagues than you had? I mean, they're embracing you, you led them, and that's off the charts for a rookie. How did that evolve? Well, I wouldn't just, I wouldn't call myself like, I wouldn't call myself a leader, I, I just, I like to just positively impact people. I, I, I'm accountable. Um, I want to be accountable, and ultimately, I just want, I just want the respect from from my peers. Uh, when, so, I mean, I, I just want to treat everyone how I would want to be treated, and um, I, I just have a special bond with these guys. We've bonded kind of through uh, some tough times this year. I mean, this has been we, we tr improved tremendously from uh, from last year to this year. I mean, it's. It, like there's a lot of improvements. I mean, I do anything for those guys in the clubhouse. Like I, I love all my teammates. Everyone has just been incredible. Like they've treated me with class and respect. And um, I like to try and, and, and be a good, I try and be the best teammate I can. And I want to treat everyone else uh, with that same uh, respect and, and class. And um, I, I want to get better. And I, I hopefully I can help other people get better as well, because that's, in order to be a team, I feel like uh, relationships can, can go a long way and kind of, and it's awesome that kind of everyone's received me that way. And where we were at to, to kind of, I mean, 11 games under 500 to have what, 86, like 85, 86 wins mm -hmm. in a year. I mean, to, to come back the way we have and, and to really have a, like to be 10 games above, that, that's tremendous. I mean, that's just an, a testament to, the character of every single guy in that clubhouse because there's no sense of giving up. There's always a sense of urgency. It was a, we had a winning attitude. It's just, I mean, games were, were tough to come by, um, but we, we didn't let that stop us. We kept climbing, we kept staying the course, and um, 11 games under, that's, that's a lot to, mm -hmm. to kind of overcome and even have a shot at the playoffs because it could have been really easy just to just fold up the chair and just say uh, whatever happens happens like we're not gonna we'll, we'll just kind of just see what happens just kind of go out there lackadaisical but we were on a mission and we're, to be on a mission in that in the state we were in and to actually execute and, and fight is awesome I mean I I mean those are guys that I'd, I'd want to be in foxhole with I haven't met your parents yet I'd love to because they did one heck of a job. Thank the you. social consciousness that you've brought to this organization in this city from everything you did to basically defy MLB's decree about not being able to wear the first responder hats to commissioning the shoes that you did. I hope you realize what an important part of the fabric of sports, never mind baseball in this city, you've become as a rookie. It's incredible and I just need you to promise Mets fans one thing. Okay. Don't ever change. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't plan on it because I guess I, I guess kind of my moral code is a little bit different. There's a difference between doing the correct thing and doing the right thing. And for me, I always want to follow my heart, and I always just want to be me. So, um, yeah, that's the one thing that my mom that my mom always said. It's like sometimes like the correct thing isn't the right thing. You always have to trust your instincts and, and, and follow and follow what you really believe is true in, inside, even though it may not be like, even though it's technically correct, but it's not, it's, that's, that's not the right way to do it. Well, you did just about everything right this year. It's been a thrill to watch you in this record-breaking season, and we look forward to many, many more special seasons for Pete Alonzo with the New York Mets. So thanks, Pete. Thank you.
Pete Alonzo, our guest on One on One. I'm Howie Rose. We'll see you next time.